TCI is brought to you by Escandorea standing at TaylorMade Stallions, the most dominant three-year-old this decade. Welcome back to a special edition of TCI here at the Kentucky Derby alongside Joel Cunningham. I'm John Siegel. Joel, we've been anticipating this day. I'll tell you what, for me, it did not disappoint. I absolutely didn't, John. Good crowd as always. Obviously, I had to fight the rain. That was the first storyline we had to get past. We kind of knew that was coming, right? So we, we got a sealed racetrack here. I thought the track played pretty fair all day. You know, early on the card, I thought it was a little speed right, favoring towards the inside, but I thought it played ball, fair towards the, towards the end of the day Final. here. And they I think you saw that the rail also remained good, out even out in the Derby, when you look at Golden Soul coming up the rail, when you look at Revolutionary coming right. up the rail. I think the rail was good, but look where Orb won the race out in the middle of the track. So I think it was a fair track. That wasn't really the storyline. To me, the main storyline was the pace scenario. Yeah, the pace was so surprising to me. I mean, we talked about would we see sub 47 in here. Joel, it was really hard to anticipate we would see 45 again. Well, 47 on an honest track. I mean, when you look at this year's Derby contenders, I really question where the speed was. I mean, we talked about Fallen Sky, Golden Sands, maybe Verrazano stalking them. It was clear that Verrazano was given the orders to stalk. I would have never thought his stablemate Palace Malice would be on the lead. I mean, they go 22 and change, 45 and change. I don't care if it's a sealed track or not. He clearly ran off of Mike Smith, had an open lead going into the back stretch. That could not have been the game plan, and that's always the risk. When you go first time blinkers on a Colt, that is always the risk. Palace Malice compromised his race by running off with the blinkers. Well, at the top of the stretch, we see Normandy Invasion make a huge move. You think maybe he moved a little bit too early. He did, and it doesn't shock me, because here's a Colt that's been keen the last two weeks here, John. Had that surprise blowout the other day. I tell you what, Javier warmed him up good, even in the post parade of the Derby. As soon as they broke off down the back stretch before the race, this horse basically ran to the center of the back stretch by the clocker stand, came back oh, around. So he was been, he's been very on the muscle, very keen. He's looked good, but that made me concerned about the Colt. Clearly, he moves early in here, whether it's Javier, whether it was a Colt doing it, he moves early in here, and it obviously gets him flat late. Well, we got to mention the morning line favorite. It was revolutionary. Calvin Burrell, he got his trip. He was on the rail. Looks like maybe he just got a little tired. Yeah, I thought Calvin had to wait a little more than he would have normally have liked to, you know? Golden Soul got position on it. Golden Soul had the rail, but he had a clean run the whole way around there. He saved all the ground in the world. Go watch the, the head on for Golden Soul. Had a beautiful trip, then he comes out in the stretch, finishes up. No wonder he was second here. Obviously liked the track, liked the slop, and got saved all the ground on the rail. Revolutionary had to follow him finally. By the time Calvin got through, I thought Revolutionary's you know, got a little flat the last 16th of a mile, but Golden Soul got the better trip. That's why he finished in front of it. Gallup out huge, may see him in the Belmont, but let's talk about the winner, Orb. Joel, we've been touting this horse for a long time. Got to give it to you. You mentioned him when he was just an allowance winner. How fun was it to see him in the middle of the of the track and win the Kentucky Derby? You know, it was interesting. When he was 7-1 for a while in the pre-derby betting, I mean, up, up to like 10 minutes to post time. Now, they bet him a little bit late. I, I, it was so bizarre that so many people got off this horse because they questioned the wet track pedigree. You know, it's like they want to jump on Revolutionary in the slot, but he's by a son of AP Indy. He's by an, out of an O'Brien O'Mare. The slot pedigree is there through and through. It did not matter what surface this colt was on. Rosario is on fire right now. All he needed was clear running. Rosario kept him outside, made that run around the turn to get to position like we thought and finished up down the stretch. And I think he won with something left. He sort of floated to the grandstand when the, when the crowd roared, I thought, uh, inside the eighth pole, finished up. But when he came back to the winner's circle and they put the roses on him, to me, he was not just a horse that had absolutely emptied out in this race. Don't be surprised to see him back as a strong contender, not only for the Preakness, but for the Triple Crown. I really feel that way. We could see it this year, John. All right, thank you, Joel. You know, like you mentioned, it's on to the Preakness now. Yep. Make sure you guys come back later in the week. We're gonna talk about the Peter Pan, and we'll probably break down the Kentucky Derby a little more as well.